So today is a beautiful spring day outside, and in honor of spring, I'm wearing a flowery shirt and my neighbor's mowing his lawn. So today, we're going to be talking about, let's see, ah, ransom criteria. Ransom criteria is used to predict the mortality or the severe acute pancreatitis prognosis in patients with pancreatitis. It does not give us diagnosis. It's also not the most highly validated tool. That would be the patchy criteria. But it's the most commonly used and tested. I got a question on ComBank just a few days ago that was testing my knowledge of the Ransom criteria. So if it's testable on ComBank, it's probably testable on the real thing. And it's obviously going to be useful in real life. Ransom falls into two parts. There's a score given at admission, and you add to that score 48 hours later. You, and it's a composite score, so you have to wait a full two days to, to get your ransom score back. Each piece of the criteria adds a point, and the more points we have, the higher the mortality risk. So let's take the obvious metaphor and treat this like a ransom situation. There's going to be demands at the time of the assault, and there's going to be a new set of demands once the police arrive. So the time of the assault, our robber, or the time of admission, our robber has broken into this old lady's home, specifically an old lady over the age of 55. The elderly person has diabetes, her blood glucose is over 200, as well as, you know, she's feeling a little under the weather, and her white blood count is over 16,000. So this is a prime target, not to mention they're rich. So if we pretend that our enzymes... Our, um, our serum enzymes are a form of currency, then this person has over 350 LDH and over 250 AST. So perfect target to rob and kidnap and ask for a ransom. So now by two days later, 48 hours, the police still haven't arrived and our robber is getting cozy. So he's getting cozy, he's getting kind of hungry and he's deciding to bake something. So the robber is trying to bake some buns because we have a BU1 over over 8, except that there was no milk in the fridge. So these are milkless buns because we've got a calcium level of less than 8. So to top that off, the robber also added 4 tablespoons of baking soda instead of just the 1 teaspoon because we've got a base of greater than 4. So clearly our robber is not a great cook and the buns are way too dry because there is fluid sequestration greater than two liters. So while the drop robber is making these disgusting buns, our old frail lady is still tied kind of too tightly to a chair. And this is a problem because she's having a hard time breathing. Her PO2 is less than 60. To make matters worse, the rope is kind of rough. So she's been bleeding out from some skin cuts from the rope and has a hematocrit of less than 10%. And that's it. That's the ransom criteria. For each one of those parts of the story, you add up, and you know, the higher your score is, the, the, more, the higher the mortality risk for your patient is. Simple as that.